the way you've spoken to us, Lord God, in these days, through your servant Gunter Krollman, Lord, through Pastor Vigo, and through our precious brother, Lord God, David Hathaway. Thank you, Father, for these living testimonies. Thank you, Lord, even as we see, Lord Jesus, the passion and the power and the demonstration that follows David's life, Lord. God, you said that you would turn the hearts of the children to the parents, the hearts of the children, sons to the fathers, God. Lord, you brought fathers. Lord, you brought David into my life, Lord. Oh, God. And I want to thank and praise in the day that we're living in, Lord God, that we can look at men like him and say they're not retiring, they're being refired. And Father, we pray right now. David, you come right now, David. Oh, hallelujah. Most, come on. You had a father that was a man of God, but you know, most men, David, in ministry never had fathers. You know, they never had fathers. They never had fathers there. And all these men here, have never ever been mentored, never have a father to turn to. Pray that God would do something. They've heard a father in here. Amen. Oh, Sabrekin. It's true, I have something tremendous because my father was converted in the Welsh revival in 1905. And the interesting thing, he was converted through the preaching of an 18-year-old girl, converted also in the revival. That's how God was moving. But he, he, he was so much of a mentor to me. He, he was not only a great preacher and a Bible teacher and one of the pioneers of the Pentecostal movement uh, immediately after the... He was in the First World War, critically injured, almost died in France. It was only by a miracle that his life was spared. He was sent back to England and... Uh, that meant that he was still in England when the war finished and he came into full-time ministry and was so inspired. He wanted to be an evangelist, but God used him as a Bible teacher, as a, one of the great pioneers and leaders of the Pentecostal movement. He was also in Sweden and many other places. But to me, my memory of my father is he was a man of prayer and he learned how to walk with God. And my bedroom was over the kitchen and I would wake every morning to hear my father pacing up and down in that kitchen, praying out loud. And I knew he was praying for me. And that changed my life. And you know, to have a father or a mother that's one that really prays, and can I encourage you if you are fathers how important it is to pray for your children. They need you. But you know, God is to us a father. My father went to be with the Lord more than 30 years ago, but what I found is someone else has come in to fill that gap, and that's the relationship I have with God. He's, he's my father. I talk to him very bluntly. I share with him my fears. I share my failures with him my excitement, my joy is my blessing. And I want to pray that God would become a father to you in a new way. It's just as Dennis says, you know, the tragedy of, of, of this generation in this country is that men are neglected and not wanted. Uh, girls are bringing up their families without men. Do you realize what this means? Because... Children, but especially boys, need fathers. You know, you cannot raise boys without a father. They desperately, just as Dennis testifies of who his father was. So that father of mine had such an impact on my life. And I want to pray with you that God would just touch you. And just before I do, can I, I share just one other thought, and that is, you know, how God works through our discouragements, and I, I just feel that I should share this point to encourage you, men. You know, we become set in our ways, and so often I don't want to change direction. 
And sometimes God has to destroy what I have in order to turn me in a different direction. And more than twice, God has had to destroy, take everything I had. Once he took everything, all my money, took absolutely everything, left me virtually destitute and heavily in debt, simply to for- cause me to change direction. You know, it's, it's sometimes God, I, 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 I want to hear from God, but sometimes I, I, I'm not responding. God just has to take drastic action. Uh, I, I can remember how the revival came in Ukraine. It was only because I, I'd had the vision that God would open the Iron Curtain and I was holding these great conferences in West Germany and God was sending the power of the Holy Spirit. And again, the numbers became so big after four successive years became so big that the organizing people in Germany, and I can remember in the September, they said to me, David, we cannot organize another conference for you. It's too big. We can't accommodate the crowds uh, that were coming. And... Uh, I, I, I was heartbroken. I, I was shattered. And from September to the January, I didn't know what to do. This was my life. Uh, the, the, the thousands that were coming, and uh, they were coming from the east and from the west, coming through the Iron Curtain. And the power of God was coming them on the west. And they were taking the fire back into the iron, behind the Iron Curtain. And I was heartbroken and praying from <laughs> September. And I was away with my family skiing. Uh, in Austria, and I was going up on the mountain and being the first one on the, uh, up, up on the slope so that I, I could just simply pray. And I can remember I was standing as the sun was coming up on the top of a, a mountain, crying out to God, Oh God, this is January, where do I go? And God put in my heart, he said, go to Kiev. And you know, the amazing thing was, we went to Kiev, and that's when In the August that year, the revival broke out that has swept the whole of the Ukraine and Russia and seen tens of thousands of people come to Christ. But it came through my despair. But you know, God is the Father that directs and controls. And I want to pray. I want to pray for you, Father. Oh, Father, I just pray for these men. Some of them facing that same discouragement, feeling that everything around them has collapsed, everything has gone wrong, and they don't know how to find the way through. Oh, God, I've been through that agony. And yet through that came because you forced me in my agony, my anguish with my world broken. You showed me to go to Kiev. And Father, because you had determined to pour out your spirit there. And Father, help us to see that our discouragements are your opportunities. That, Lord, we become set in our ways and we find it difficult to change. But, oh, God, you sometimes have to be drastic and dramatic in the way that you change us. Oh, God, I'm even praying at my age that you will still treat me like this. Treat me as a child. Oh, God, I'm not so old. I want to be treated as a child. And I want to know you as a father. Oh, God, be a father to me. And, oh, God, I pray this for all these men here. Every man needs a father. Oh, God. How, it doesn't matter how young we are, how old we are. Oh, God, I cannot live without a father. Oh, God, be my father. Oh, God, hold my hand. Oh, God, direct me through this year. Oh, God, don't let me give up. Oh, God, don't let me faint. Don't let me fall by the wayside. When I fall, lift me up. When I stumble, correct me. Oh, God, when I make mistakes, correct me. And the Lord, give me a, a, a listening heart to listen and to know that you're saying I'm wrong and that I've got to change and I've got to do it differently. Oh, God, give us fathers. Oh, God, give us fathers. And Father, I ask you with these men to make some of them into fathers. Yeah. Oh, God, make them fathers, fathers to their boys, to their girls, but fathers to the people around them. Oh, God, replicate yourself in us 
and let your glory be seen in a new way. Oh God, reveal your glory in us. Please, Father, that's my cry. That's my cry that others would not see me. Oh God, I want, don't want to be seen. I don't want to be known. I don't want to be recognized. I want only that your glory would be seen. That when I stand, people don't see me, but see the glory of God. That when I speak, that nobody will hear my voice, only the voice of God. Father, let us be so absorbed by you, filled by you, that we slip away and no longer exist. And, oh God, if, if eternal life is something, let it be that even while we're living, we slip away until... We can say like Paul said, I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. Oh God, let it be in Jesus' name. Oh God, in Jesus' name, be a father to us throughout all our days. And oh God, as fathers love their sons, even when they're wrong. Oh God, love us even when we're wrong. When we're disobedient, oh God, don't turn your face away from us, but love us the more. Oh God, forgive me for every failure, forgive me for every sin, for, forgive me, Lord, for every lost opportunity, forgive me for weakness, forgive me for all my failures. Oh God, don't, don't look on me like that. Don't look on me with rebuke or with sorrow. But please, Father, look on me with the love that is in your heart. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, God, be my Father. You know, Jesus could not have gone to the cross without a Father. He couldn't have done what he did without a Father. And help me to understand that in the crisis... Jesus had to go to that mountain top to get that bit nearer to you to talk to you. Oh God, and help us to realize when the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. They were not just saying, teach us to pray. They were saying, give us the relationship with the Father that you have. And oh God, give us a, a relationship with you as a father that we can talk to you and talk to you as man to man. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just ask you to lift up your own heart. Lift up your hands. I want you to talk to your father. And I want you to ask him to establish that relationship. Come on. Say, oh God, I need a father. I desperately need a father. Be a father to me. Show me how to talk to you. Speak to me. When I'm disobedient, Lord, remind me. When I, I don't obey you, just tell me. When I do things wrong, tell me, Lord. Please, Lord, tell me when I don't listen. Tell me when I don't listen. Tell me when I'm disobedient. Oh God. But be a father. Do it in love. Do it in love. Not criticism, but in love. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. And let this today be a beginning of eternal life in that the relationship comes with you as a Father that's an eternal relationship. Oh, God, grant it and do it in my life in Jesus' name. Come on, ask Him. Ask Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. You know... Marriages break down when there's no communication. That's the biggest cause of breakdown in marriage. There's no communication. And there's nothing breaks a father's heart more than a lack of communication. I don't know whether you know, but over Christmas, the Prince of Wales was speaking in a Christmas message to the troops in Afghanistan. And he spoke of his own son. He said, my son is fighting, you know, the Prince of Wales, his son, Prince Harry, is fighting in Afghanistan. And he gave a personal message. My son, write to me, talk to me. 
I haven't had a letter from you. I haven't had a communication from you. Now that's the man who will be our king talking to his son. Is God saying that to you? Why haven't you communicated? Why didn't you share your problem? Why didn't you talk to me? And God is saying to us today, like Prince Charles, son, talk to me. And he had to do it in a, in a radio message that the world heard. And he wasn't talking to the troops. He was talking to his own boy. Is God talking to you like that and saying, why haven't I heard from you? Why didn't you share your problem? Why didn't you tell me? I'm not going to condemn you or criticize you. I'm going to help you and lift you. I love you. Talk to me. That's what he's saying to you. Talk to me, please. Amen. Amen. Let's talk to him. Come on, just tell him. Tell him what you feel. Tell him if your heart's broken. Just to say, I'm sorry, Lord, I don't communicate enough. Come and say, Lord, I want to communicate. You see, it's not just you hearing from God. God's talking nonstop. It's you've got to talk to Him. You've got to talk to Him. Not just Him talk to you. He, of course, He's going to answer you. Oh, God, my Father. Be a father to me. Let me be your son. Let me be your son. Let me be your son. Take me into your family, Lord. I want to be part of your family, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm sorry for all my mistakes. I'm sorry when I was deaf and I didn't listen. I'm sorry when I was too busy to listen. Let me hear you. Lord, I just want to communicate with you and talk with you now. Come on, let's do it in Jesus' name.